Hey, welcome back to another Producer's Cut episode. This week, it's setting yourself up for success. And this is an episode that Felicia did with her mentee. And you literally get to sit in on a coaching session that revolves around performance reviews, expectations and objectives, and how to set yourself up for success, even when your manager or boss isn't doing a good job on their end with the same work. The great thing about an episode like this is that you're literally sitting in on a coaching conversation And so there are going to be little things that they talk about that you wouldn't necessarily get from a planned episode, I think, because conversation yields nuances and offshoots to certain topics and stuff like that. So I think this is going to be invaluable and I hope you enjoy it. And welcome to the Trill NBA show. I am your host, the Trillest NBA you will ever know. And today we are doing something a little different. I am actually on location in a booming metropolis that shall not be named. And I have a special guest with me today, one of my mentees. We're gonna keep her anonymous because today we are going to talk about how she starts to work towards her promotion. And she has agreed to share this journey Mm -hmm. um, with everybody. So welcome to the show, my mentee that shall not be named. (laughs) Thank you for having me. (laughs) So we have been, how long have we known each other now? You knew me on my job hunt when I like first graduated college. Yes. And I was like, oh, sweet baby Jesus, please be a job. Please be a job. I told you you'd get a job. You were right. And now you have a job. I do. And you moved far away from home I for did. this job. I did. And you're doing very well. Yeah. But today we connected because I came to visit. Mm-hmm. And when we were talking about the feedback you got, how long ago was that feedback? This was maybe, it was very um, kind of like spur of the moment, kind of a impromptu kind of feedback. But, but when, when did it happen? Uh, maybe two months ago, but it was very, it was very, um, it wasn't formal. It was just kind of a... So, okay, so that's problem number one. It was yeah. informal, but... Your so this is your boss's boss. Yes. Okay. We won't name titles. Okay. <laughs> this is your boss's boss. And how did it happen? He put some time on my calendar and said, Hey, we're gonna chat later today, kind of a informal performance, talk about what you're doing good at, where you're doing, where you could have some room for improvement. Okay. So what kind of look did I have on my face when you first told me this? A look of shock. Yes. <laughs> but do you know why I had a look of shock? Because it's it's not typical process. Exactly. So I'm shocked because one, as we've been talking, the organization that you're with currently has had a lot of change, mm-hmm. which is typical in Fortune 500. This is your first, pretty much your first like Fortune 500 job out of college. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot you don't know, Mm -hmm. right? And you don't know what you don't know. Right. And so I was asking you, hey, when have you had your, have you had your performance review? Because you've been there a year now. Yeah. And I said, well, when did you have your performance review? And he was like, I didn't have one. When I think performance review, I just think this big formal meeting with. Well, there should be some formality behind it. Like, I just think it's this big thing. It's not a huge thing, but there's definitely, I put time on your calendar. I have a form or some sheets I give you. I have some written things that I give you. So did he give you anything written? No. Okay. So he didn't give you anything written. And then I say, well, do you have like a HR portal for performance? And you said... We have one. I looked at it the first week I started. It's just kind of been there since. And then I asked, well, did you put objectives in the system? No. (laughs) (laughs) And then I said, so do you know what your objectives were for the year? You said, no. (laughs) So you're just 
going to work every day working. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <sighs> and I want, this is very important. I'll tell you why. This is how they set us up for failure. So you have not been given formal objectives. They have not been put into the performance system. And then after 10 months of working with the company, your boss's boss, who, how long has he been your boss's boss? Or how, how long has he been there in the role? January. Okay, so you've been there seven months. He starts in January. And then when do you guys meet? Two months ago. So it's June now. So y'all met in April. So January, February, March, April. So in four months, he waits four months. He calls you in the office to tell you what exactly? A progress. Your progress. Or lack thereof. (laughs) After you've been there for 10 months. Yes. Does it feel right for you? It just feels like there's so much turbulence and no one is just, everyone's just walking around with their heads cut off. And performance is that kind of the last thing on their minds. I know when I had my first manager, because I've had several Uh since I've been in my role. Mm -hmm. Um, The first manager I had, um, he was great. And I know he was leaving and I was trying to get some nuggets that you uh, advised me to talk to him before Mm -hmm. he left. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, look, I kind of have my speech. I went in, I was like, hey, you know, kind of trying to get some nuggets or or figure out if he could do my performance review or what have have you. And he sat me down and he was like, look, I'm not going to blow smoke. Like, you're just not going to get a good good review. Or not a good review, but just a solid review. He said, it's just, I'm leaving, leaving. Like, it's just too much. Wait, you didn't tell me this part. they never got so we talked the prep but this then, was like two, I was like two months into my role I know but you didn't tell me that that's what he told you yeah because he was like you're doing great and I was like well can we do some you know get something how, how does this review formal role? right and, and he was he, like I just I don't think you're gonna get that like I'm leaving out like a formal review process with my si- like six months which usually happened in June okay he was leaving in June he was like I just don't think you're gonna get that so what is y'all's Fiscal year. Is it the calendar year? Yeah. Okay. And so what month did you start? I started in May. Okay. So So the mid year would have been in June. W- right, but but you'd only been there a month, so right. you're not gonna get that. Right. But in January, right. You should have gotten you well, you should have gotten it like an end of year and where you've been tracking for six months. Right. That didn't happen. Right. Because you didn't have I didn't have a manager or a director. Right. There, there was a while I didn't have either. Right. Okay. So now here comes new boy. Uh-huh. And <laughs> he now tells you after 10 months, he calls you in the office informally. And I'm using air quotes because he did take some notes. Did he not? He took some notes. He right. had some written on his little notebook. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And he says, bullet point, what was the feedback? Uh, one of the bullet points was that I, I make errors. You know, sometimes things aren't as clean or like, is professional it, looking. Is it email, PowerPoint, like what, in what medium? Um, maybe it's like some Excel errors where it's not formatted correctly. Like he, he had an example where like, I had something that was given to me maybe three hours before end of day and it was due end of day so I was rushing to get it done and it was several pages of all this data that needed to be looked at and I did it it was done it was done at 7 30 at night you can see in the email that he pulled up right to show me where where the issue was (laughs) you can see the timestamp 7 30 clearly stayed late for it but like there were instances where like I could have hit like um you know where you do format painting and kind of make everything so you didn't make it pretty it, yeah it wasn't so it formatted wasn't... and centered like he would have liked it oh i thought 
there was an error like in the numbers or um it wasn't I, I, or there was spelling errors it wasn't spelling errors it just wasn't formatted or for instance like you know sometimes the like the number instead of showing the full number it kind of had like a plus in it it didn't expand uh-huh. on the excel so uh-huh. it wasn't just as pretty but you know sometimes like if i'm doing a 50 page p l right sometimes the margin isn't on one of them is is incorrect or something like that but for me i feel like the errors come when i have a short amount of time to, to get do it something. done you know I'm, yeah, yeah. when they you've had a last minute request yeah did you tell him that yeah and what did he say and he said you know it's something that we're, we'll work on and he didn't make a big deal of it no okay but he, which is good because yeah. he shouldn't he just wanted you to be aware yeah he, he feels like you know this is kind of a learning curve and he did call out like he felt like i was new in my career and it's just kind Duh. of a learning curve and it's like <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. okay so what was the second piece of feedback the second piece of feedback was um my follow-up and i was like well what exactly does that mean yes um my job is is super busy i manage right. I don't know. I think he gave me the dollar amount of the, of, of I actually the portfolio. Know. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think it's sixty four million. Okay, that's a nice chunk of change. Yeah. That um, you're managing. You know, for someone pretty new in their career. Right. Yeah. That's, that's um, a lot of money to be responsible for. So I mean, I'm pretty busy day to day. Right. And so, what didn't you follow up on? Well, that's what I asked him, and and, and there are things where maybe it slips through the cracks, but I have to pri- and I told him I have to prioritize sometimes. Right. If, if I can't necessarily don't have time to do the admin tasks that someone right. asked for, I have to prioritize and, and go after the $16 million customer as opposed to the two. Like it's right. just, that's just how the name of the game. Um, so he kind of understood that. And I told him, you know, I have to prioritize and I have to push back on where things aren't, aren't working out. And he, he agreed for, for me the most part. I think when I asked him about the follow up, he said, well, for instance, there's like this report and when I was trying to learn, like I clicked around and I just, you know, I, he, he was always like learning and I was like, well, I can do the same thing, but if I could find a shortcut to do it. Like, right. So did he not want you to lean on cross-functional teams to get information? Maybe that's what he was hinting at. He didn't say it like that. Um, okay. But his example was that he clicks around and, and, and does things. Okay. So... My suggestion there is make sure you get clarity on that Mm -hmm. to understand exactly what that means. Mm -hmm. Because even though this was quote unquote, and I'm using air quotes again, informal, Mm -hmm. um, best believe he is expecting to see progress or for you to come back and say, hey, you had said this, and this is what I'm doing to work towards this. Now, mind you, this was feedback he gave you two months ago, right? Mm -hmm. So have you had another conversation about it since? Um, We have, but I've been trying to uh, cut the mistakes and make sure I'm not having any spelling errors. Wait, 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 y'all had another conversation? No, and I'm saying, like, kind of since then, my actions to fix kind of the issues. But have you had a... Have you had a follow-up meeting say, here's the things that I've done to oh, address oh. the feedback you gave me? Oh, no. Okay. We're going to talk about that, too. Okay. How to do that. And then what was the third feed? The third feedback? one, he felt like my manager was, um, like, speaks for me a lot or kind of steps in. Steps in. Yeah, that was your manager. Exactly. And he wants to see you take more ownership. Yes. So, I really hate that, too, because your manager is how new? She started in October. Wait, he's, she started before him? Yes. Oh. I mean, he's been with the company. But right. No, but I mean, in in these roles. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, had, I had a new director first. Oh, so yes. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. That's a lot of change. Yeah. So how let's first let's talk about how you're feeling. <sighs> Honestly, you've had a bunch of managers in a year. Mm-hmm. So how does that make you feel? I feel for a while. I I, I feel like it's better now 
But okay. For a while, I just felt very unsupported and mm-hmm. unstable. Like I was just kind of running. I mean, I still feel like it now, but running around with the cheek of my head cut off. Where I don't, I it take, I don't know what my roles and responsibilities are. I don't know if I'm doing too much. Mm-hmm. If I'm not doing enough. You know, where should I push back and say, "Hey, you guys could, should do that," or or maybe maybe making sure my focus is on the right things. Mm-hmm. So I think it's sort of that learning curve. I felt very unsupported. I think for the first several right. months you know working so many hours and just right. kind of spinning my wheels and i think once my now director stepped into the role um he's kind of brought some stability to what i'm doing which is helpful mm-hmm. um for a while it's just like i'm doing things but i'm not understanding what i'm doing i'm just doing it to do it because so somebody said me. hey i need you to do this yeah. and you're like oh, okay i figured that out yeah for hey instance, I need you to do this. Uh, okay, I'll figure out how to do that. And, yeah. And there's no guidance, no leadership, no training. Right. Just throw you in the water. Right. Sink, swim. We don't, we right. don't know. And for instance, like when you said, when I first started, you were like, make sure you understand, you know, the P&L, the profit and loss statement. I was like, okay, cool. The instruction I got was put this number here, put this number here, send it to finance. And I was like, okay. But when, but when people come back and ask, well, why is this gross margin off? Or why is this, you know, invoice to net? I have no idea what we're talking about. So it took my now director coming in. And, and I, I do give him a lot of credit because he has sat down with me. I think he's seen, I think he maybe was surprised at how little I, I knew mm-hmm. coming into the role. But I, I've had to explain to him, you know. I'm I was, brand new. I'm brand new. <laughs> and for a while, I was doing my job and my boss's job for yeah. a good three months right. with no experience. And just trying to keep my float, right? So it's been it's been a challenge, but I feel like it's kind of a I'm not really in shock anymore. I'm just right. kinda Here we are, lot. corporate America. Yeah. Have you had any experience or have you seen anybody else that maybe your peer that you feel like has been supported in the organization or do you feel like overall this organization just is it's just nuts mm-hmm. well I, I know I told you before with, with with my particular role I'm the only person on my level who's doing I would honestly say manager level work because I have right because you have your own portfolio of right. business. Right. And everyone else on my level. They're supporting their the manager. manager. So I think that's kind of a. Right. But does your, did you talk to your boss about that? Yeah. And she's, she's feels like I do too much. And then I told you about my advocate. She's actually talked to my director and said, you know what? Three's are too much. Like this is too much her level right um it's just not fair so they've had they recently brought someone in yeah okay to split it so i feel like now it's good i can have an appropriate level amount of work for right. my role right um I'm, I'm still kind of not sure how i feel about that because like it's good in one instance but then i kind of feel like is this like a devotion because well no i mean but the, the question is are you setting me up for success like, yeah. is the organization setting me up for success? Mm-hmm. It sounds like the organization has not set you up for success. Mm-hmm. It sounds like they have thrown you in an ocean and said, hey, swim. Mm-hmm. Good luck. Oh, by the way, we know you don't know how to swim, so good luck. Yeah, mm-hmm. that feels really shitty. But it happens to all of us mm-hmm. a lot as mm-hmm. Black women in corporate America. Mm-hmm. And so... The reason why I wanted to have this conversation is I hope this resonates with somebody. Mm -hmm. And now let's talk about how even in an environment that has set you up for failure, you can set yourself up for success. Yay. So first thing, let's talk about how we attack this feedback Mm -hmm. okay so what i want you to do is tomorrow when you get to work you're gonna get to work early i want you to block off some time like 30 45 minutes Mm -hmm. and i want you to sit down and bullet point write out that feedback 
right? Okay. In an email. And I want you to write the email. I want you to say, hey, such and such. I was reflecting on, because it's been a couple of months. Mm-hmm. I was reflecting on the feedback that you gave me in our, when we had our conversation on X date. Mm-hmm. And I want you to go back and look at the, the date. Uh huh. And I want this. So this is called documentation. Mm. Okay. I wanted to make sure that you knew I heard you. And I wanted to make sure that I didn't miss anything. Mm -hmm. Here is the feedback I heard. And then you bullet point the feedback you heard. Mm -hmm. And then I want you to talk about, and we'll strategize. I think I took notes, so I need to like. Yeah, go back in your notes. I have it at work. Okay, perfect. So go back and say, this is what I I heard. These are the notes I took. Mm -hmm. Bullet point, you know, one, two, three, Mm -hmm. four. And then say, Over the past two months, this is how I've worked to address your feedback. Mm -hmm. And then I want you to bullet point some of the things that you've done. Give examples. Mm -hmm. Um, I really believe this is a great development opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to set up more time on your calendar to talk about my progress on this feedback. Okay. I need you to do that tomorrow. Okay. And then I need you to schedule time with him for like a next week or the week after, right? Okay. And I want you to send him that email by the end of this week. Okay. Because it's been two months. Yeah. And so you just want to say, hey, two months ago on this day, we had this conversation. Mm-hmm. And I just want you to know that I was... What that does is two things. One, it shows maturity. Because mm-hmm. nobody really likes this feedback, right? Mm-hmm. But... You don't want it to seem like you don't care. Mm -hmm. Two, it shows that you're being proactive and thoughtful about it. And then three, it shows that you want to be developed and you want to get better. Mm -hmm. And those are the people you want to work with. Right. So you want to, that's, you're going to show that to him in that email. You're going to CC your boss on that email. Okay. Then did you talk with your boss about the feedback? She was there. Oh, oh, it was both of them there. Uh-huh. See, you failed to tell me this. Oh, no, it was, it was both of them. I mean, she didn't say anything. She just sat there, but she was there. And they tried to make this seem like it was informal. How does this make you feel again? I feel like they're very buddy-buddy. Like, there's the two of them. It's just two two peas in a pod. And you don't feel, you feel like you're an outsider? Me too. Yeah. They're both white, huh? hmm Yeah, yeah. <sighs> okay, so make sure you send that to them. Mm-hmm. Address it to you, your boss's boss, but make sure you CC your manager, mm-hmm. right? So now, next, let's look at this, and I know you guys can't see this, so bear with me, I'm gonna try to describe. Every Fortune 500, pretty much, I I would be surprised if there's one that doesn't. If there if there's one that doesn't, email me and tell me about it <laughs> at ask at trillmba.com. But every company, every five, Fortune 500 company has a performance portal. They have a performance development portal. It's where you officially go in and your info is in there. It's usually my info. There's a company called Success. Factors. I think they're in San Francisco. A lot of times they're the company that runs this for many Fortune 5. They got this whole thing online. And it is a talent management system for your company. It'll start with, like, if your company is ABC company, it'll say, my ABC or my performance or something like that. It's usually something really super generic. So, like, this one has the term performance in there. Um, it has a little logo, and it's the same stuff that was at my old company. So let's talk about how you navigate this thing. Whoops. All right. Yes. Okay. So you had these online courses. When right? like first When you first started in October. Let's see. You didn't have any other courses. Welcome. Blank, blank drives our performance culture and how we define, measure, manage, and reward employee performance. Okay. The 
this is interesting. This looks just like my own, except for right here. Mm -hmm. Like it would say objectives. So there should be something here. Let's click in this and see what this says. Okay, see how it says your goals? Did you see that? So we're clicking around in the site right now. And it says, want to take more responsibility and ownership of your career success? Duh. Sorry. <laughs> Work with your manager to set your performance goals for the year. What? Did you not do that? You didn't do that in January? You had a manager in January. Do you see this? Our performance managers processes emphasize your personal accountability for accelerating our growth game plan. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Now, look at this. You didn't do any of that, did you? So December 1st and January 15th, you're supposed to complete your year-end performance evaluation and meet with your manager to discuss. And then between January 15th and January 28th, you were supposed to set your goals for 2018 and meet with your manager to discuss. And you didn't do any of this. I mean, I guess we had the one two months ago. <laughs> Don't make that face. <laughs> oh, okay. This is really important. Let's look at performance evaluations. Oh, oh, going forward into 2018, there will not be any formal performance rating. We are, however, asking you to evaluate your performance for 2017 and set goals for 2018 with your manager. <laughs> this is some bullshit. Oh my God. Oh man. Oh, okay. Listen, even though that says that, that's fine. Uh -huh. However, still use these things because even though there might not be any formal in the system, mm -hmm. there's still an informal process where they're going to rate you. All right. And they're going to they're going to determine who is high potential talent mm -hmm. that people they want to keep and they want to put in the talent pipeline to groom for talent. And you always want to be in that number. Right. Because you get the best projects, you get promoted, you mm -hmm. get rewarded. So even though they're not going to do this formula, I would still use these tools. And even though it's not formal, I would put some formality with your manager and your manager's manager. I would do this process anyway. Okay. So you still have all the, I would, so I would print this stuff out. Mm -hmm. Okay, F FAQs. If you have not yet established your individual goals for 2017, please do so now. <laughs> oh, this is horrible. Is there a mid-year performance rating and or written mid-year feedback? No. Regular check-in conversations. Oh, this is setting you up for failure. Can I update my goals throughout the year? Well, yes, you can. Are there year-end ratings? No. How will bonuses be determined without ratings? Let's see. This is so interesting. Bonus payouts for eligible employees will be based on shared business performance metrics. Oh, no rating. Yeah, that actually sounds pretty cool. What is the purpose of the ongoing check-in conversations? Regular check-in conversations allow you and your manager to discuss progress to date in achieving your individual goals and align on priorities for the remainder of the year. These discussions ensure alignment in our in driving our growth. I'm not going to read that in case that's some proprietary language there. Uh, they also provide you with insights about individual goals to be adjusted, personal strengths to continue demonstrating and personal development areas to prioritize. Okay, so please contact your HR business partner with further questions. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. Mm -hmm. I want you to meet with your manager. Mm -hmm. 
And y'all have this thing that I'm not going to say. I want you to print this out. Mm -hmm. Understand it. Well, this just talks about like their the company. Right. But this is the... So remember how I told you you need like, to understand the big picture. picture? This is the big picture. You need to understand it and you need to know how your this has changed goals. Really? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> but then why is it still on this website? Okay, it's do you changed. know who your HR business partner is? Uh another guy that hired me. No. But like the guy I worked with when I started. Okay, so contact that person and say, hey, can you tell me who my HR business partner is? Okay. But look, see here, it says um, things I can't read. So sorry, uh, audience, bear with me. See this right here? Mm -hmm. So that must still, this must still be good to go. This strategy that they're using still must be good to go. I can't see it changing. Cause it was late that year, so it was close. So I would use I would I would print this out, and then I'd go back to let's let's go back to where we were. I would do this: clarify expectations, provide foundations, how you contribute, because this is what you want to do. And then you want to set SMART goals. Now, this is everybody uses this. Let's talk about what a SMART, smart goal is. Mm -hmm. You want to set goals that are S specific, <laughs> um, M measurable, A achievable, R relevant, and time bound. So the time bound is what can you get done between now and the end of your fiscal year, which is the end of the year, right? Mm -hmm. um, specifically, what are the tasks, and they have to be measurable, and they have to be achievable. Like you have to say, I can really get this done by the end of the year. Yeah. And they relevant means they have to tie to the overall this strategy. Okay. And so you need to understand that because he's saying that you're not your boss is talking for you you're you're not being proactive about things like well how can you be proactive if you don't have no damn goals yeah what you gonna be proactive about yeah what where, where they do that right your company <laughs> <laughs> so you have to put their feet to the fire and the beautiful thing is uh -huh. once you have your specific like these are the three things I need, three or four or five things mm -hmm. to work on the rest of the year. You knock that out. Anything you do above and beyond that makes you look like a rock star because you went above and beyond. But if you're just running, 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 like you said, just any and everything, they telling you to do any and everything, you're just doing any and everything. Mm -hmm. What are you really supposed to be doing? And then how, how can they say that you're failing when you don't even have goals yeah so you have to make them frame up and and i would also take your um you said you now have a job description yeah from when i started okay take that job description and mm -hmm. say what are the things on here that i'm actually doing day to day uh -huh. and what are the things on there that seem like i'm not doing mm -hmm. also take that job description and talk to your boss and say what's the priority in my job in this job description. Mm -hmm. And now let's make some specific goals. Okay. What's gonna move the needle for the rest of the year? What's gonna make us successful? Okay. What questions do you have? Um, I think all of these are really good. I don't, I, I think in our conversation, I'm realizing that I, don't have specific goals to hit. Right. And I, I don't think I, like my eyes are even open to that prior to this conversation. Like, what am I, what am I striving for? Right. And obviously, once you get up to speed and you know what's going on, I'm past that point. But now I have to reach certain goals. I can't just keep doing the day to day. Like I need to think bigger picture. Exactly. 
and you need to stretch yourself. So one thing, every company, we talked about, so I don't feel like this will give away your company. Every company's trying to figure out e-commerce, right? Mm -hmm. And you said that feels like it's some a big push in the company. Mm -hmm. So as you were working towards building your resume and gaining experience, mm -hmm. You know, express that you have an interest in that. And if there is bandwidth, after you figure out what your goals are, <laughs> if there's bandwidth, you would like to be exposed to that experience, right? Yeah. And it might not happen this year. You might not have bandwidth after you know what your goals are. But you might. But you got to let that be known. Okay. You have to... to couple things that need to come out of this. Mm -hmm. And I hope people are taking notes. One, you have to take control of your career. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because it said it, right? Like your own company is telling you, hey, you got to do this. Right. And now they're not even having a formal rating system. Yeah. And I'm making all kinds of faces and rolling my eyes to that because how do you then evaluate talent and how do you create a talent pipeline? I would also say mentee since i'm not gonna say your name find out who your hr business partner is go make friends don't make waves don't tell them any don't tell them your business just say hey i'm curious about the process mm -hmm. now understand they may know jack shit, right mm -hmm. fine but at least you know what they know or what they don't know but i would go set up 30 minutes just say, hey, I wanted to introduce myself. I've been here a year. I don't think I've ever met you. Can you tell me what the process is for building the talent pipeline? Yeah. Because now I, you know, we don't have a formal rating system. And I just want to always make sure that I'm tracking and that I'm stretching myself and I'm setting myself up for success. Mm -hmm. And any advice you can give me how to navigate in this organization would be great. Mm -hmm. and ask them for their expertise and their advice and just be your lovely bubbly self no you're not making waves you're not don't complain don't point fingers don't find fault don't even mention that you don't even have goals don't mention that okay. just say hey i see this i saw this i just want to learn more about it my mentor told me mm -hmm. that that was interesting that we didn't have ratings anymore and you know just to um, touch base with you, introduce myself, and just ask you about the process to make sure that, you know, I'm tracking. Then I always say, my goal is to be a rock star in this organization. Okay. And just smile and look cute. I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, positivity. Non-threatening black woman. That's what we have to be to survive right now. Okay. I know you're going to make it. We will have a follow-up call, and I want to see. Um, so, what's your takeaways? What are you supposed to do? What's your homework? My homework is... First thing tomorrow. Let's start with tomorrow. First thing tomorrow is to go find the notes that I took from... Can I take notes? Everywhere. Okay. Good. To find those notes, provide a recap, mm -hmm. say, these are, this is, these are kind of... The nuggets that I took from our conversation. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm doing to track towards the nuggets, mm -hmm. and then ask for a follow up meeting to maybe track. Right to just and just have the out. conversation to say, "Hey, just want to discuss with you guys in person," and then make sure you put the date of the last meeting so you have that. The doc, you have to document this, yeah, because. This is how you make this situation work for you. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay. And you're not in a bad spot by any means. I don't want anybody out there feeling like, oh my God, if they see themselves in your story and be like, oh my God, I'm being set up for failure. Not necessarily, mm -hmm. but I definitely can't say you've been, you know, thrown the layup shot of the final and that you can slam dunk it. Mm -hmm. Like, that's not where you're at. But if you do these things, you will be. Because you're smart and you're sharp. The next time we talk and get the update, we'll talk about 
you know, you really working to find those advocates and sponsors in your organization, Mm -hmm. which is difficult to do. Mm -hmm. But we will have a more prepared approach for that next time. Okay. (laughs) But for now, that's step one. And then step two is? Set up a separate meeting with my manager. Take a look at my job description. Mm -hmm. It's a long one. Figure out where I need to prioritize. Yeah. And then sit down and get some smart goals. Exactly. For the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. Right? Because you're halfway through the year. Yeah. So that would be like next week? Yeah. Do that next week. Okay. And then what's your third homework assignment? One more meeting. Oh, with HR. Yes. To chat about just how to navigate this process. process. Now that we don't have ratings, yeah. how do I navigate this? I just want to make sure the organization sees me as a rock star. Right. And ask, like, point blank, you know, is there any advice you can give me mm-hmm. if I'm not already there mm-hmm. because I want to get there? Yeah. It just seems super happy and eager. Like, I really love the organization. You know, put on your best face. Lie if you have to. I love it. I love the thumbs up. I love it. Well, thank you, mentee. Um, One of my many mentees that are out here doing it, surviving in corporate America. I'm so excited for you, always. I see big things in your future here. And um, let's just make sure you're, you know, on the right path and make sure that you are getting the support from your leadership that you need Mm -hmm. and it's just going to be that you have to ask for it and there's nothing wrong with that okay don't be afraid okay but then also understand you don't know what you don't know yeah so that's why you have mentors i have you exactly so you guys this has been a live mentoring session with the chosen MBA you will ever know and one of my fabulous mentees um if you have questions that need answers hit us up at ask that's a-s-k at trill mba.com that's t-r-i-l-l-m-b-a.com i'm here to answer questions um and i'm here to help so that will conclude our show for today you want to tell people bye Bye. (laughs) and we are out keep it true y'all the trail mba show is a fair world corp llc production executive produced by felicia and rose anuha music is kick push by ryan little keep it trill every day y'all